this business of, of controlling the costs and living simply. And that was the secret, how much money. Warren and I had tiny little bits of money. We always underspent our income and we invested and we, well, you know, if you live long enough, you end up rich. It's not very complicated. Ever wondered how some folks grow their money so easily, while we're often struggling with bills? Today, let's uncover the secrets of a man who didn't just learn how to make money, he made the rules himself, Charlie Munger. Get ready as we explore Munger's simple steps to building wealth. Steps so easy that they could change how you manage your money from today onward. Like Warren Buffett's belief, Munger emphasizes building solid and lasting relationships. And Charlie is undoubtedly one of those friends for Buffett. Their partnership spans almost four decades and has played a significant role in the tremendous growth of their Berkshire Hathaway company, which now stands as a $700 billion valuation. I've conducted extensive research on Munger's path to wealth and realized that his genius lies in places you might not expect. I discovered that his five-step method for getting rich is not just remarkably simple, but it's also something anyone can execute. Let's break it down together. Step number one, make it simple. I have a habit in life, which is I look at it and I observe what works and what doesn't. And I'd seen so many idiots get rich in easy business. Naturally, I wanted to be in an easier business. The first step, which many people overlook and don't pay enough attention to, is to actively look for and start a simple business full of opportunities. As Munger says, the first rule of fishing is to fish where there are a lot of fish. If you want a big catch, you need to go where there are many fish. Let's imagine two people, Sean and Scott. They're both very smart and have done amazing things like getting master's degrees from a top university in four years, all while getting perfect grades. They both want to reach their goals and are ready to work really long hours. They're honest and work well with others in their business. But there's one more big thing to think about. Let's say Sean decides to work with the coal mining industry, which isn't as popular anymore. But Scott chooses to work in a renewable energy sector, where business is booming. According to what Munger says, Scott would have a better chance of doing well because he's working in a place where there's a lot of opportunity. Even though they're both smart, hardworking, and honest, Scott's in a better place because he's working in an area that's growing fast. Scott simply fishes where the fish are. Step number two get to $100,000. The hard part of the process for most people is the first $100,000. Getting together $100,000 is a long struggle for most people. And I would argue that the people who get there relatively quickly are helped if they're passionate about being rational, very eager and opportunistic, and underspend their income. I think those three factors are very helpful. The second step Munger emphasizes is to save and then invest your first $100,000. According to Munger, your journey to making it to that first $100,000 can change your life. It's like a tough test, you know. It builds character because it pushes your limits. It's all about getting into the right habits, too, like saving your money, making smart investments, and constantly learning about money matters. The magic really happens when you keep these habits over time. It's not just about your money growing, but you as a person, too. By tackling this first big money goal, you're setting yourself up for success in handling and growing even more money later on. In Munger's eyes, the lessons you learn getting to 100,000 are your key steps toward achieving real wealth. You know, when you're starting from scratch, trying to save your first 100,000 can feel like a mountain to climb. Each dollar you invest is coming straight out of your regular income which can make this task feel really tough. But hitting that first 100,000? That's your first step on the journey to building wealth. Now, getting started is always hard, no matter what you do in life. The first step is often the most difficult, but it's also the most important. After all, you can't get anywhere if you don't start moving, right? This is just as true for your financial goals. So yeah, saving up that first 100K might seem like a massive challenge at first, but it's worth remembering that the first step is always the hardest. Once you get that momentum going, things start to get a lot easier. If you have good judgment, your life will work a lot better than if you have bad judgment. And you get good judgment gradually over time, partly by making bad judgments. 
and having them work out poorly. So my counsel has always been to start trying to be better and keep doing, keep trying to improve all your life. As Charlie said, we've got to start trying to be better and become better because we've got to ask ourselves, are we just looking for excitement or do we want to get better? If we want to get better, we must be ready to make significant changes in our lives and accept the changes we make. After a long time on a familiar road, we often get too comfortable, slowing our progress. But it's important to remember that change is the only thing that stays the same in life. If you want to get rich, you will have to change your life in a big way. One good way to get started is to save and invest half of our income instead of spending it all at once on a whim. Also, it's important to get interested in stock selling, just like other wealthy people do when they're looking for ways to make money. As an investor, spending less time and money on shopping for things and more time and money trusting the stock market as a great marketplace and equities as excellent goods is essential. Scaling up becomes less challenging once you successfully achieve your initial $100,000 milestone because you will have reinvested the profits from your acquired assets. Your account balance would consist of your principal amount and the profits from your investments. As a result, you won't need to save as much to reach your next $100,000 milestone. After making your first $100,000, as Charlie suggested, you can slow down a bit and let the power of compounding work in your favor. By investing your funds and earning an average annual return of 8% over 15 years, your initial investment would have grown to almost $320,000. It's always good to start early and hit the ground running to make your first 100000 Then you can take the back seat. Making a good investment can be challenging. To make a good investment, you must work to stack it up and turn it into something before you set it all in motion. Once it's in action, you have to do less work on it each time, and after a certain point, you don't need to put in any more work. As it keeps growing and gaining its own speed, it becomes impossible to stop. Step number three, buy and hold equity. Now, the third step to attaining wealth is owning equity. This idea is to own a piece of the market and let it grow. Let me explain. Charlie has invested most of his multi-billion dollar wealth in just one company, Berkshire Hathaway. How much does Charlie Munger make after almost 50 years with the company? Despite owning almost $2 billion in Berkshire stocks, Charlie still earns less than most lawyers and doctors fresh out of college. Remember, Charlie Munger's success is not a result of earned income, but instead on account of an increase in Berkshire stock. Basically, all investment is, is value investment in the sense that you're always trying to get better prospects than you're paying for. But you ha can't look everywhere at once, just any more than you could run a marathon in 12 different states at once. And so you have to have some system of picking some place to look, which is your hunting ground. But you're looking for value in every case. Like Charlie rightly said, you've got to have a system in place that helps you get the right stocks. And here's one of the systems that can help you out. When looking for a job, look for opportunities that can give you a stake in the company. By buying more shares of your stock, your stake in the company grows, and you get more significant percentage of the company's assets and earnings. In information technology, workers receive significant amounts of company stock as rewards. And this has made people in such fields become multimillionaires after joining these rapidly expanding companies, all thanks to the increasing value of their stock grants throughout their employment. Step number four, don't spend. Now you have to make your spending less than your earnings. Splendid life. And he always lived way below his income and, and was able to help other people when they needed help. He was a very good example. And he was kind of firm about it. He, he never took a drop of liquor in his whole life. Somebody asked him once, why don't you drink? And he says, why would I take money out of my pocket and put something in my mouth that would make my head work less well? <laughs> Well, you can see why I like my grandfather. Just like Charlie admired his grandfather, who spent below his income, spending less than you make is essential if you want to become rich. To most people, this seems simple, but it becomes a roadblock when it comes to practicing it. But I'll first address the big spenders who spend more than what they bring in every month. When you start paying more than you have, 
you receive gifts or take out loans. The process of obtaining a loan has never been more straightforward than it is right now. And it's all thanks to the rising tide of the solid global economy. Whether it's to buy a new set of gadgets, a vehicle, a home, there are so many opportunities to be enticed into taking out a loan. According to the Federal Reserve, at least 40% of American households suffer from excessive spending. And the problem with personal debts is that it can become a prison. In truth, there are some types of good debt. Credit card debt is the most popular type of consumer debt, and it also serves as the perfect example of how easy it is to become trapped by it. The most effective way to avoid incurring interest charges is to pay off the amount in full before the introductory period expires. However, most people charge the maximum amount on their credit cards and then pay only the bare minimum each month. Combined with a very high interest rate, this little payment barely covers the monthly interest. As a result, using a credit card as a source of financing is a highly costly option. If a person spends every dollar they receive, it is evident that they are not saving for the future. And this means they will almost certainly need to take out a loan to finance large ticket things such as furniture or travel. As a result of this behavior, obtaining financial prosperity will be difficult, if not impossible, because the debt trap has been established. Step number five, diversify, but to a certain point only. Am I comfortable with a non-diversified portfolio? Of course I'm comfortable. If you think the mongers, I care about the mongers. The mongers have three stocks. We got a block of Berkshire, we got a block of Costco, we have a block of We Lose Fund, and the rest is dribs and grabs. So am I comfortable? Am I securely rich? You're damn right I am. <laughs> and could other people be just as comfortable as I am if they didn't have a vast portfolio with a lot of names in it? Many of whom neither they nor their understand or their Advisors understand? Of course they'd be better off if they did what I did. Charlie said he is comfortable with his not too much diversified portfolio, which has made him rich. While diversification is excellent, too many diversified assets can lead to problems. And in Charlie's famous words, excessive diversification is foolishness. Now, diversification is one of the best ways to smooth out the bumps in the road of investing. But what does that actually mean? Diversifying your assets means putting money into different types of investments with the knowledge that the results of these investments will change over time. In the stock market, the value of some assets will go up while others will come down or stay the same. Because of this, having a broad portfolio can help protect your earnings. Understanding diversification can be challenging, and only some people grasp it immediately. However, I want to emphasize the importance of practicing diversification wherever you invest as it plays a crucial role in your overall financial well-being. Knowing that potential risk is associated with excessively diverse investments is essential. As your stock holdings increase, monitoring and managing each becomes more challenging. This risk arises from having many different assets in your investment portfolio. Excessive diversification can cut down on how much you make, giving you the average return on the market. But if your risk tolerance is high enough that you need hundreds of stocks in your portfolio to feel safe, the best way to put your money is in low-cost index funds instead of picking individual stocks.